Now, Thomas Hobbes was a 17th century philosopher who contributed greatly to the subject of political philosophy. During the later years of his life, he lived through the English Civil War, living amongst such brutality, watching the changing of the country, parliamentarians fighting royalists, and the ensuing chaos that would follow, it really made Hobbes question the nature of the state. What is government, and how did it come to be? Right. In his book Leviathan, Hobbes looks at the earliest years of human development, before society, before civilization, and of course before government. Hobbes refers to this as the state of nature. Hobbes was very critical and pessimistic about the state of nature. This state was a time with no laws and no rulers. In a way, complete freedom for every human. However, living in such a state, Hobbes argued, was complete chaos and something we would definitely want to avoid as it would offer no long-term benefits for humankind. Without rulers and laws, humans were free to be as savage and as brutal as possible. It would be a life of brute violence. There would be no safety, no security or trust, and as such, partnerships, growth and civilizations would not develop. There would be no industry, no commerce, no culture, no arts, no knowledge and no sociable or civilised life. Each day would just be a battle to survive, and as Hobbes claims, continual fear and danger of violent death, and the life of man, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish and short. Wow, a very terrifying thought. Right, so as you can see, most rational humans would not want to live in this type of world. Hobbes believed humans were self-interested, so they would want what was best for themselves. And also, humans were rational beings, so they would strive to create an environment that took them out of this state of nature. This is where rulers and governments would need to be created. Hobbes did not believe in the divine right of kings, whereby God has created certain men to rule. In fact, Hobbes believed that it was the human beings as a collective who decides the rulers. This collective is the social contract. Humans get together with a mutual interest to create a better life than the state of nature. I see. First, people will give up their complete freedom. They will give up their complete freedom in order to live together in peace and stability. They will create rules and common laws that all must follow. Secondly, they will hand over complete power to a person or a group of people to enforce these laws. This is the sovereign, the authority that makes sure the social contract is followed. The role of the sovereign is to ensure there is peace and stability in the society, and they have unlimited power to make sure this remains. The rulers then can do whatever they want, whatever they need to do in order to maintain the peace and safety for the population. This is the social contract. We collectively agree to follow laws and rules and we give unlimited power to the sovereign to make sure we all follow them. We can never limit the power of the sovereign and we can never try to fight against them so long as they are fulfilling their part of the social contract and maintaining a safe environment free from chaos and from the state of nature. Remember, all that stands between humans and that chaotic, brutal life is the sovereign, and so they must always remain all-powerful all the time. Okay, so automatically I feel uncomfortable with the idea of having a ruler with unlimited power. We know the phrase, absolute power corrupts absolutely, and the idea of having, let's say, an evil or unhinged person with absolute power is frightening. This can very well lead to an unhappy, even depressed population having to put up with a crazy tyrant. Of course Hobbes' social contract is not perfect, but no political system ever is. There will be inconveniences, or at least there will be times of inconvenience, depending on who the sovereign is. However, Hobbes would argue that this is a small price to pay for completely escaping the brutal state of nature. This was necessary in order to avoid living in horrible awful conditions where every day is a violent struggle and life would never improve. I am not convinced. 
I would argue that the wrong sovereign with unlimited power can in fact create a state that resembles the state of nature Hobbes has described. This is definitely not outside the realm of possibility. We can easily imagine a brutal violent dictator that has unlimited power and starts inflicting terror on the population or parts of the population. This has happened so many times. You have evil rulers who have destroyed their societies through thoughtless acts of war. You have had stupid rulers who have destroyed economies and commerce. I can't see how giving one person or a small group of people unlimited power can be sustainable. Because we are talking about a long-term system, Sure, there may be times where there are inept or bad rulers, but there will be times where there are great, heroic and intelligent rulers. So the system is there all the time. It allows for the good, the mediocre and at times the bad. But the state of nature is constant, the brutish environment is everlasting and we cannot ever get out of that state. We cannot improve unless we create the social contract. Well, I think Hobbes may have been a bit hyperbolic when explaining the state of nature. It can be argued that humans are not necessarily that brutish and violent in nature. Hobbes has basically said either we are all completely free in chaos and we will be fighting and killing each other forever or we give complete and unlimited power to one person to stop us killing each other but also that one person can control every aspect of our existence. Surely there is something else. This can't be the only two states of existence for human beings. Thank you for watching this clip from Philosophy Vibe. If you did enjoy, then please watch the full video linked below. Also, don't forget to like and share. And for more philosophical debates and discussions, please subscribe to the channel.